Hi, how are all my photographer friends doing this morning? I am very excited because I'm going to give you a short lesson on how you can take phenomenal sunrise and sunset pictures or any picture where the large majority of the picture is the sky or the pictures about the sky or the reason you're taking it is because of the sky. It's very important to make these pictures nice and dark. If you just take a normal picture, you're going to see a nice white sky that doesn't have anything in it and the sun's going to be all white or pictures of uh, the sky's going to be all white. You're just not going to see a lot of dramatic looking sky. You want these pictures to be really dark. You almost can't make them too dark. The darker you make them, the more color you will see. When you make your pictures or take them nice and dark, you will see red colors and all kinds of colors that you don't even see with your human eye because our eye adjusts for how bright the sun is. You want them so dark that the sun, instead of being white, is kind of yellow or at sunrise time, it can even be a really dramatic red, which looks phenomenal in your pictures. And I also suggest also including a person or something to add to your picture to make it a silhouette. Now you can try this with a cell phone and I love my iPhone 15 Pro. I take a lot of pictures with it, but it's not the best for shooting sunrises and sunsets. Um, it just doesn't make them dark enough. You can help the situation out a little bit and make them a little bit better uh, by touching your screen exactly where the brightest spot of a, the picture is, which in a sunrise would be the sun. So if you touch the sun, you'll notice they'll darken up a little bit and that's going to help out. But the absolute best way to take them, um, I hate to even say this, you have to have an actual camera that's not a phone. It can be a point and shoot camera or it can be a small DSL camera. Everybody likes mirrorless cameras now. It doesn't matter what kind of camera it is. You just need to control, you need to put your camera in manual. You need to set the ISO. You need to set the shutter speed and then you need to set the f-stop. So I have two cameras so let me show you how quickly and how easy it is to do with my two cameras and I'll also be showing you some examples of the same scene of what it looks like when it's not dark enough kind of on the bright side you don't see much and then I'll show you some examples from the exact same spot where they're nice and dark and then we'll end the video of a few pictures I took at my favorite place which is um, Lighthouse Beach in Evanston on Lake Michigan. Another place I love is in my hometown in Glenview, Lake Glenview. And by the way, just in general, the best place in my opinion to take sunrise and sunset pictures is on a larger lake. Lake Michigan works great and the lake in Glenview works great because it's pretty large. You get that beautiful reflection of the sun that runs the entire lake. And again, don't forget to include other stuff such as uh, buildings, rails, fences, birds. People make great silhouettes. You could do a great picture for your family where you have your kids stand out there and the sun is right in between them and make it nice and dark. They'll be completely silhouetted, so you're not gonna recognize them, um, but forever, you'll have that photo, you'll know it's them, and they'll know it's them, and it will be a definite keeper. So let's get started. Hey, we're gonna take a look at two of my cameras to do the settings for great sunrise and great sunset photos. This is so easy to do, so let's get started. The first thing you do is take a look at your shooting mode dial. You might have yours on automatic right now. And what you want to do with mine, you have to push the button, but some you don't. And you just change the setting to M. There you go. We have the first step done and that was so easy. The next thing we want to do is saying change the shutter speed. Mine's at one, two thousand, one hundred, two hundred fifty thousandths of a second. 
Um, that's probably a little fast for even sun and sunset pictures. With my camera, you turn this dial and we're gonna lower that down to about 800 and that should be pretty good. Let me turn this light on so you can see a little bit better about what's going on. Um, you also want to change the ISO. That's pretty easy to do. Uh, what you want to look for is the button that on the top of my camera there that says ISO, but some cameras just show you a plus and minus uh, symbol, which mine has. That means ISO. Uh, so what we're going to do is let me push this back up so you can see it again. Let me just tur tur turn the light on. There it goes. And you push the ISO button to show you just the ISO, which we see is 100. That happens to be really good for sunrises and sunsets. You can, you can uh, push that button and change it to pretty much anything you want to for really low light, but where we want it is about 100. It doesn't go any lower than that. The next thing you want to do is change your f-stop. Right now, I have mine at 5.6, which is really close. Often they're higher. With my camera, you go to the dial in the back, which is right here, and we're just gonna change that up to about F, F8. That's a good place to start. Once you start taking your pictures, if you notice that they're not dark enough, go back down to your f-stop control and set it up higher. Try like 13. If that's not dark enough, try 16. If they're too dark, then just go a little lower. Um, once you're shooting, the only button or dial that you should have to change is your f-stop. Now let's go on to another camera I have. I also have a Canon G10. It's kind of an amateur camera, but they made it in the style to make it look semi-professional. Uh, it's really good as a backup camera for professional photographers, or in the early days, it was really good for photographers that also wanted to shoot video. It's even easier. All you do is look at the top dial on the right, and you can see mine set to the green automatic. And all we need to do, don't push any buttons, is just change that over to M, which is really easy to do. And then we look at the back of the camera and we have to change the shutter speed and the f-stop. To change the shutter speed, there's a dial on the right. You simply turn that and we're gonna turn down to about 500 of a second, and then you hit this dot here to be able to adjust the f-stop. So let me hit that, and now I'm going to turn the same dial and set the f-stop to about f8. Again, just like with the other camera, if you wanna make your sunrise or sunset pictures darker, then just change that dial. Now we also have to change the ISO and with this camera, it is extremely simple. If you notice the dial uh, underneath the shooting mode dial, right now is set at 800. That's way too high. Good for low, low light or dark photography, but not good for sunrises. Simply just change that. I mean, this camera is really good. It goes all the way down to 80, much lower than my professional camera. So this should just work out fantastic. I took this this morning with my regular camera. Then I set my settings to manual to make it much darker and it's better. I was at Lake Glenview last night and got this. And then I switched to manual and got a much better photo that I like. I was at Lighthouse Beach last week and got this. Set my camera to manual and got this, which is much more dramatic. I just love taking pictures at Lighthouse Beach in Evanston. It's different every day. I always look for people to include in my pictures as silhouettes. It's very easy to do. Just put them in front of the sun or stand behind them. Well, that wraps it up for this lesson. I hope I was able to help you out and I hope you get some fantastic 
sunrise and sunset pictures with my help. Definitely try it and definitely go to some big lake near you. My next lesson is going to probably be on how to take great pictures of the moon. You don't need as much zoom lens as you think you do. I have a 300, but if you have a 200, you'll be fine. Um, you just do a lot of cropping afterwards and crop down the picture. Cameras today shoot such high quality images that you could do a lot of cropping. And the moon is similar to the sunrise and sunsets. You have to shoot in manual and you want them nice and dark. That way you get all that fantastic detail on the moon. So I look forward to doing that one in the future. And for now, I hope you have a great time out there taking photographs.